morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. You are watching Seeds for You by Sherry. And if we are meeting for the first time, I'm Sherry. Today we have a special show lined up for you. I have a couple of beautiful ladies here with me and uh, I'm going to introduce them in just a second, but uh, I designed this show just for you. So if you have a story that you want to tell or anything like that, you can contact me and come on the show. But today we're going to be talking about SRD Hollywood Productions. That is uh, my theater company. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about our journey, where we've been, where we are right now, and where we plan to go in the future. So I want to introduce first uh, Elonda Gatewood who is our business manager for SRD. And I met Elonda many years ago when I first started writing plays and she was actually a model in my play, so she's a model. And then next up, we have my sister, my sister La Jacqueline White, who is here all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. She is our missions director and also we are all a part of the casting crew. So learn more about our auditions coming in the future. But right now, we'll be right back after this. Okay, welcome back. Again, you are uh, watching Seeds for You by Sherry, and I'm Sherry. I have with me today Elonda Gatewood, who is the business manager of SRD Hollywood Productions. It's spelled like Hollywood, but with one L, Hollywood Productions. And then I have my sister, La Jacqueline Wright from St. Louis, Missouri, and she is over our missions department, and uh, we're all a part of the casting crew. Okay, so we're just going to get right into it. We're just going to be talking, just uh, none of this is scripted. We're just going to be having a conversation about SRD, where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. But I'm going to start with Elonda. Elonda, can you tell us about what that experience was when you first learned about SRD having a theatrical production that you were asked to be a model in? Well, um, like you said, I met you um, as a model in your, one of your plays. Um, I was sort of intrigued because I was actually working with a troupe. And when they um, offered me this opportunity, I really didn't know what I was getting into. The last play that I ever did was actually in high school. So, okay. um, but I have to say that it was, I was very impressed okay. um, to see the actual, um, production to see the professionalism Thank even you. your writing style like I everybody that I've ever invited to your plays have all said the same thing that you are a remarkable writer so Thank I was you. very impressed to see the um the caliber of a show that you put on. Thank so you. I was very impressed. Thank you. And I have to say that I was impressed with you too because the lady who brought you on board um, was Sophia. Sophia. Sophia brought you on board and she brought all the models in. And uh, one of the things that she came and whispered in my ears is that she said, We also have one that looks like Tony Braxton. Oh God. <laughs> and oh, yes. I looked at you and I was like, You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But you were so humble and you didn't want to accept it. But you're beautiful. And I'm still not accepting. You're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. Now you made me want to run. <laughs> yes, you're Thank beautiful. You both. And so it has been an amazing journey having you alone all this time and for sticking with us this long. Absolutely. Now, Jackie, my sister, <laughs> tell us about when you first learned that I was writing that very first play. What did you think? Well, I thought it was great because I always thought about how Dad. Um, inspired you to become a writer and it was just great to see you put pen to paper mm -hmm. and birth what you've had in you for so many years because I remember you telling me as a child you were very shy very but that is no longer a truth for you <laughs> um, I think the playwriting and all that you've done it's really brought you out of your shell mm -hmm. and I'm just so very proud of you and so happy to call you my sister thank you <laughs> thank you thank you and so Jackie my sister is one of the biggest cheerleaders that I have and she has always been a great cheerleader for me it's just like anything I do if I go tell her I'm gonna go burp on the mountain she's like all there for me <laughs> She is there for me. She's there for me. So she's an amazing sister and aunt, I must say, to my children and my grandchildren. She's amazing. So now, uh, Elonda, once we got that first show going and you modeled in it, what was that experience for you after the production? After the production, like you said, um, it was a nice experience because I've always done runway shows mm -hmm. um, starting at when I was 16. Um, 
So it was something new to actually do it as a part of the play. Mm -hmm. And the way that you transitioned it was great. Um, then after the fact, I like to be kind of in the background. And when you opened up the opportunity for me to actually come and work with you and help you with other productions, um, even you've even given me an opportunity to direct. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about that. I thought that I was going to actually um, do costumes for um, movies. And speaking yeah. of costumes, she is an amazing seamstress. Yes. Amazing, because I feel like if you can do prom dresses, then you are the bomb.com, and this yeah. is your lady right here. Yolanda, she's so humble. She's so humble, but, <laughs> yeah. but look, don't let that smooth taste smooth, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because when we first got started, as my sister mentioned, I was shy, so it would be like a few challenges that would come up. And I didn't want to address them because that shy part of me was still operating. But Elonda was ready to rip them up one side and down the other. <laughs> it's about business. Yes. It's about business. And that's why I'm her business manager. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be just like sick them. <laughs> because she would get the job done and she wouldn't think twice about it. She would just go and take care of it. And that was it was a done deal. It was a it's done about deal. business. It is. It's and about she's, business. She's very good at it. She's very good at it. Because sometimes she used to, like when I first met her, I didn't know how to take her because we were having a little meeting and uh, she started addressing me and I was like, like a little puppy, like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But, you know, as, as the years went by, we have grown to be very close friends, very close friends. And she's amazing. Actually, we're like family now. We we're like family now. Mm -hmm. And this is the best family to ever be a part of. The, I call them the right girls. <laughs> she does. Um, and they're, I mean, look at them. <laughs> like, I'm over here basic. <laughs> and no. they came in here flash. She got the nice ruffles. We got the sequins. And I'm just here, you know. <laughs> but I still come and join in because they are, like, really the most amazing people that you could ever come in contact with. Now, Thank let me you. let me just clear something up right quick. She doesn't have to work hard at it. Okay, first mm -hmm. of all, we said she's a model. So just about anything she puts on, she's going to rock it. Absolutely. All right. And and, yes. and then it, God forbid, well, I don't know if that's the right choice of words, but don't let her don't let her put a little lips on or something like that, and then it's a whole <laughs> new Hollywood vibe, okay? Right. <laughs> It's a whole new Hollywood vibe. So that's the deal. Mm -hmm. But here I have my my great sister here. And so, Jackie, can you kind of tell us, like, after you actually saw my work on stage, what were some of the thoughts that you had, you know, as an audience member? Well, I remember your very first play, you did it at your church, O'Fallon Apostolic um, Church. Mm -hmm. And I can remember you sitting over to the side. At that time, my mom, our mother, was still alive. Right. And she took one look at Sherry and said, oh, my God. She said, she's nervous. Let me go talk to my daughter and get her together. But after, you know, I saw your work, I was blown away. I okay. call my sister Sherry Perry. Tyler Perry, <laughs> you better watch out because she's yes. really an awesome playwright. And thank I you. do believe one day that she's going to make it to Hollywood. Oh, thank I do. You. Yeah, your work thank is you. really well put together. You put a lot into it, a lot of thought into it. And, she was pretty much starting out a one-man show. She didn't even have any help initially. Right. She did everything. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very and, proud of her. And you. I have to say, uh, our mom, that, that was really a beautiful thing, uh, uh, you know, for her to recognize that right away. Because I'm telling you, I was scared straight. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, number one, it was my first show ever. Mm -hmm. And we had to push the date back a couple times before we actually got to mount it on stage. And so when we finally got that actual production date going, all the people coming in there, when I saw all those people... I was just like, oh, my God, we had standing room only. It yeah. was so packed in there that that is what intimidated me because I was like, OK, these people are expecting mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And if I don't deliver, then my name is Mud. And she so, delivered. <laughs> <laughs> and so my mom came over and she talked to me. And that just really was a blessing. That really was a blessing. And my dad never got to see any of my work because he had passed on before. But I have to say that that that's where my inspiration came from because he saw the gift in me long before I did and he tried to encourage me to be a writer but I was too shy at that time so when he died I felt an urgency to write and I wrote my first show my first play okay so Elonda 
tell us what it was like working with the cast. Now, we would like to hear <laughs> what it was like for you as a model and then what it was like for you when you put on the director hat. Um, because, you're, because I was actually switching roles. Mm -hmm. um, I am more comfortable, like I said, I've always, I've been modeling since I was 16. Um, so that was just kind of something that was natural for me. But getting the opportunity to actually switch over to director mode, because like I said, I like to be behind the scenes. I like to make things happen. Um, and that's the business side of me. So putting on the head actually kind of made me feel empowered. Okay. Um, I felt like um, it was um, a blessing actually answering some of the things that I've always wanted to do. That's the creative side of me. I feel like I'm more creative. Mm -hmm. So it gave me an opportunity. It opened a door and it actually made me want to do more of it. Okay. So, yes. Okay. And then again, like Jackie said, you're so amazing. You really are amazing. Thank you. Um, I just really can't wait to see what happens. Thank in the you. Future. So, working with some of the cast, did you encounter any issues with any of the cast members at any time? Of course. You yeah. know, you're going to always, I mean, when you're dealing with people, mm -hmm. you're going to always encounter some type of discord. Mm -hmm. um, but being the fact that I have worked in the capacity of dealing with people all my life. I mean, I've even worked at the arena in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I've worked for the Dallas Mavericks and also right. the arena. So I've come face to face right. with people. So that's probably one of the reasons that it's easy for me to step into a position and say, okay, this is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're not going to act this way because the same way you came in, <laughs> you can go out. Listen guys, listen. <laughs> Yeah, and the funny thing is, when I worked at the arena, I had a boss that literally always said, okay, you're going to need to go take care of that. And I'm like, but you're the boss. You know, why am I doing that? So I've always kind of, but I I feel like I do it in a business, a professional you do. manner. You do, and um, you gain your respect. So, um, and then I'm tall, you know, so yeah. they're going to have to <laughs> give me respect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm tall and then I wear high heels. So Okay, okay Jackie, mm -hmm. so you had an experience where we pulled you in to was it do tickets or something at a table? Cast and call in tickets. Okay. And so that first experience when all these people started to overwhelm you with money for tickets, mm -hmm. what did that feel like to you? Well, initially it was okay, but as the, you know, time got closer for the play to start, it became very overwhelming <laughs> because everybody was coming in all at one time. But I do believe that I had some help, yeah. so it wasn't something that, you know, mm -hmm. got all blown out of proportion and, you know, it, I, to me it turned out to be a great experience. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed being a part of the casting call. I think that may have been your second or third play. Mm -hmm. It was nice to be able to see the people that were coming in to trial for the plays, okay. to see them, you know, put all that they had into trying to act to get a role or sing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just thought that was a very um, amazing experience for me. I had never okay. been, you know, a part of anything like that okay. before. Okay, so now tell me about, and Elonda, you can speak to this as well, like when it came down to the, to the part where we had to make a decision about a person mm -hmm. what did that feel like because sometimes people come in they're so sweet they're so kind mm -hmm. and and you like them but they just didn't really make the cut yeah that's tough because my heart goes out to everybody so i just want everybody to win all the time <laughs> but of course that couldn't happen and you just really have to you know pick the person that you feel is best for that mm -hmm. particular part mm -hmm. so i mean it was hard for me, but then in a sense it wasn't because, you know, you want your play to be a great success. Right. So you just really have to pick the person that's best for that, the, for the, the parts, mm -hmm. for the roles. And what about you, Elonda, when we were down to the decision making time? And I feel the same way as Jackie. You know, I'm a true cancer, so I'm very sensitive, even though people don't think that I am. When, <laughs> but again, I know how to separate business from my personal life. Mm -hmm. um, for me, again, like Jackie said, we wanted to make sure you had the best production. Mm -hmm. So that meant getting the best person for the part. Okay. Um, we would want to put everybody in, find a spot for everybody. 
but it's not going to be the case. And I think one time you told me I made somebody cry, but my thing is, <laughs> is that if they actually advance into the real mm -hmm. spectrum mm -hmm. of that industry, yeah. They're going to probably do a whole lot more crying because right. nobody's going to hold their hand and That's say, right. you know what, um, this, you know, at least we even gave them coaching. We actually told them what right. was wrong. Right. So mm -hmm. they're not going to even get that. So mm -hmm. they had the ability to actually embrace, mm -hmm. you know, and it was constructive criticism, you know, right. um, because we want to maybe come back to the next one and try That's out right. again. Right. So, again, for me, it's just about business. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have, you, and that's the thing about business, you have to remove yourself right. outside of, take yourself out of the equation and look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. Do you want a good production or do you want your next best friend? Right. right. And so, as we are in the middle of an audition and people are coming in, what kind of qualities do you think you're looking for? when people come in? Let's we'll start with you, Jackie. Well, um, I, they were not professional. We weren't on a professional level yet, but mm -hmm. you do have to have some sort of professionalism mm -hmm. right. to be a part of a great production. So I would say someone that may have, you know, been in theater before, right. that have sang in front of, you know, large crowds before, yeah. you know, some type of experience, mm -hmm. I would think. And what about you, Elanda? Because we, we encountered a lot of people who didn't have experience, right. but they did a phenomenal job. And for me, and I'm going to probably go, kind of go to the opposite of what Jackie just said. I don't really necessarily want them to have experience because it's kind of like for me, I look at it as a job. You know, when we go in and they say, well, we're not going to hire you because you don't have experience. Right. Well, if you don't hire me, how You'll am I going to get the experience? experience. Right. So when it um, when the actual people come in for the audition, what I'm really looking at is we already we've read your script. Mm -hmm. So we know what that character should be. And I look and because I love movies and you don't even have to talk about this. <laughs> here, I love movies. So when I'm looking at a movie, I'm looking at the character. I'm okay. looking how they actually carry themselves and then also how they embody the actual character. Okay. And just from a simple read, you can tell if a person can transition into the character. We know right. what we want that character to portray. Right. So can that person really give us that? Because you can tell during their reads or yeah. open reads <laughs> whether or true. not they can, you know, get into that role. Right. So that's what I look for. Not necessarily having experience, but have some talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I believe the door should be open, you know, because we just might miss out on that one gym just right. because they didn't have experience. Right. You know, and I'm glad that we're talking about this because uh, in the future, SRD is going to start uh, uh, doing plays here in Texas. So look for that. And I hope that you're paying attention because this would be good tips for you to learn in auditioning. So when you come to audition for a show or a part, and again, we're saying that you don't have to have experience, but you need to have potential and you need to be able to follow directions mm -hmm. well because we have no problem with uh, helping you to cultivate a gift that may be just lying dormant inside waiting to come out because there are a lot of people who have interest to become uh, or work in the arts but they don't have that experience yet well with SRD you can gain that experience mm -hmm. you can come in and uh, we'll help you we'll help you to grow we'll help you to grow your own audience and all of that but when you come in to audition you need to have a monologue and a lot of people don't know what that is. And you can go on our website again at www.srdhollywoodproductions.com uh, and you can read some of the frequently asked questions there about auditions. Now, tell me, when people come in and they do a monologue, what are you actually looking for, ladies? And we know a monologue is just a one-sided thing, just that one person talking. So um, what would impress you most about somebody doing a, a monologue for me it would be delivery right off the bat okay. um, again you can see a person's true character mm -hmm. um, you can see um, again they may not have had the experience but to come in and do a read and just really deliver um, it's the tone it's the expression it's the whole you know their body 
language mm -hmm. that s translates because again me watching a movie if somebody's just sitting there like they're reading a book it's I mean you just really depleted the whole show right mm -hmm. I agree with Elonda the del delivery is definitely the number one thing that you know we would be looking for mm -hmm. Please, absolutely using correct grammar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just um, an overall presence. I think yes. you have to have a, a lot of presence, stage right. presence. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I will say this. Uh, we had a lot of auditions in the past, and one gentleman came and he read it. So I was not impressed with that because uh, one of the things about doing a monologue is, first of all, letting us know that you can remember lines, you know, and if you're reading it, then you're not remembering the lines, okay, because you're reading it. So uh, come prepared to do an audition with SRD if you have that interest. And what you want to do is you want to introduce yourself and then introduce the piece that you're doing. So if you were doing a piece from a sitcom on TV, then you would say, uh, hi, my name is Sherry Wright, and I'll be doing this piece for you from Living Single or something, where, wherever you chose to pull one. And um, then you go into it, you know, and you want to project, because that's one of the things that you're really going to have to do in theater is project. Because if there's ever a microphone fail or something, the worst thing that can happen in a theatrical production is for the audience not to hear you. So you want to get in a habit of speaking loud and making sure that you're heard. And delivery is very important, very important. So if it's a very exciting part and you're just kind of like just saying words, then that's not going to impress us. So those are just some tips that you can think about if you're interested in auditioning with SRD Hollywood Productions. I have a couple of questions for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's do it. So I'd like to know how do you prepare to write a play mm -hmm. and where do your topics come from? How, mm -hmm. Because you've yeah. written some really extraordinary plays. They have Thank been you. fabulous. Thank so where you. does all of that come from? You know, it's funny that um, it's not something that I sit down and dream up. It can be a thought because you remember when we were younger yeah. in our 20s and we used to go to like Hallmark stores and I would be sitting on the floor <laughs> reading the cards and stuff like that for hours. And, and then people listening to. Yeah, because you remember Tim cussed me out that one time when we went to that one place. Uh, because Charming I took Charlie. too long. Yes, yeah, we were there for like, <laughs> what, four, four hours? hours. Well, That's let me what just she say, does in bookstores. Let me just say, when I get into it, I get into it, okay? Yes. All right, so maybe I saw an experience, because I like to listen to people talk, too, and I steal words from people. Like, if you say a word and I never heard before, but I think it's a nice word, I'll find a way to use it. So I would see a situation. So it's like I already see the outcome before I do the play. I see Ooh. a situation. So like with single wives, uh, that idea came from the fact that obviously there are a lot of single women. OK. Mm -hmm. And single women sell themselves short oftentimes because they give too much of themselves in a single relationship. So, for instance, uh, you're um, having sex. You are having their children. You are supporting them financially. And some of them, you are actually just downright taking care of them. So you're giving them all of these benefits without having the benefit of being mm -hmm. a wife. So you're having his children. You're helping him do this, this, and that. And you're not a wife. You're just a girlfriend. So that's where that idea came from. So I wanted to put on stage four single women to notice that, you know what, maybe I am giving too much of myself. I'm the prize. I, I deserve more than this, you know, and then just kind of take from that because I always have a message in there mm -hmm. that I want you to get. So whenever you see any of my plays, always watch for the message because there's always a message hidden in there that I want you to get. And so I just wanted women to value themselves more. And uh, because really, to be honest, men are only going to do what you allow them to do. If you let a man string you along for 20 years, guess what? He's going to string you along for 20 years. But if you have some um, standards about yourself, because have you ever heard a story where a woman has been dating a guy for many years and then after he break up with her, he married somebody like in a year's time? Yes. She had or different standards. <laughs> she, she had different ooh, standards. Ooh, she had different yes. standards. So if you would have had other standards, mm -hmm. then you would be the missing. So that's where some of my ideas come from. 
some of my ideas. It comes from situations that I've witnessed. And so I'm like, well, how can I tell this story in a way that's going to uh, let the person see themselves, uh, give them something to think about, give them some direction on a positive end, you know, so that they can move forward in whatever that situation is. And I really think you should redo that play. It was Single wise. excellent. I think you should really. Mama cried at that one. I was just getting ready to say that. My mother saw herself in one of the characters. My dad had passed away. And one of the characters, they were singing a song about being lonely. Lonely. Mm -hmm. And she just boo-hooed. And she just yeah. thought it was so, you know, just, just her life mm -hmm. at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she was talking about cooking for herself and mm -hmm. doing this for herself. Right. And uh, it just really ministered to my mom. And she was it crying. Did. Yeah. She so, was Sherry, we know that you relocated and you've taken a long break. Mm -hmm. So when do you think that you'll be, you know, putting paper, pencil to paper okay. to do another play? Do well, you have yeah. something like you're thinking about writing about now? You know, that was my initial thought when I first got here. It was like, oh, I need to get back to writing. I need to write a write a show. But then I thought I'm in Texas. They have not seen any of my work That's yet. True. So I can just pull some of my old work up and we can start there. Like you said, single, single wives. Mm -hmm. right. We can start there as single wives and then uh, we How also How many did, have you written so far? Let's see, we had single wives, Dancing on the Edge, Color of Rain, Unpleasant Excitement, Circle of Influence, Have I Become Your Enemy, and then I did a couple of short films. Wow, so a lot. Circle of Influence actually was based on a true story. Uh, this young lady sat down with me and we had an opportunity to talk about that show. And uh, we did it, you know, based on an experience that she had. And what I wanted to get out of that is that sometimes single moms, once they become single moms, cause we don't, sometimes we get married and do it all right and still end up a single mom. But she was now a single mom and back in the dating realm and she had this daughter and the guy was looking at her daughter and the mom didn't want to hear that because she thought the daughter was just jealous and didn't want her to date. But I want that message to go to moms that you need to listen to your children. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, always look for the message because I have one in there. One okay. last thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about when you went to Atlanta, Georgia, okay. and um, you were asked to bring one of your plays there? What? was that experience like? Oh my God, you guys were talking about doing this show it was intimidating. First of all, it was intimidating. I can't even believe that I got up enough nerve to submit it just based on the, the chance that I might get chosen. And so I did, I submitted uh, one of my plays to, uh, what was it called? Africa, no, Atlanta something. Black Theater Festival, Festival. Mm -hmm. Atlanta mm -hmm. Black the Theater Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I submitted to them, and of course that wait was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You're thinking you're not going to get it. And then so finally I get this message that they wanted to invite me to come. And it was for a stage reading, which is actually the way you should do all of your productions before you mount them. I never did that. But she called us, um, she invited us down for a stage reading, and so I got to take... Well, the cast, we all got together, some flew, some drove, whatever, whatever. And we got down to Atlanta and we had the opportunity to do a stage reading for Atlanta. And, and I thought that was a blessing because although it was just a stage reading, it was enough to say that you write well enough to be <laughs> noticed. That's right. And so that's what I got out of that. So that was an amazing experience. I can't believe it happened. I can't believe I was there. I can't believe I was in a hotel. I was like, is this what it's like? <laughs> So, yeah. Tyler Perry, I keep saying, you better watch what? out. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, leading into, since Jackie had a couple questions, okay. where do you see, what's your vision okay. for your business? Awesome. So, when I first uh, started SRD Theater Production back in Illinois in 2005, uh, we have changed the name since then. We were SRD Performing Arts Ministry. We were SRD and Wright Performing Arts Ministry. We were a lot of different things before we got to this place. And at that time, I wanted it to be 501C, but now I'm leaning more towards the LLC. So uh, we have changed the name again to SRD Hollywood Productions. And what I'm planning to do is I'm trying to get everything in order business-wise right now to set up here in Texas, which is very different from starting it in Illinois because in Illinois, some of the things that I did came free of charge. 
like looking for the name to reserve mm -hmm. didn't have to pay for that here in texas if you're looking for the name and somebody else has it they charge you a dollar every time you put a new name in there and if you're just like really really mm -hmm. seeking that can add up after a while mm -hmm. and if you don't pay it they come after you so uh and then now getting the name i think uh it's going to cost about three hundred dollars to do that so but i'm what i'm doing now is just getting everything in order business wise and I am planning to mount my first production in 2024 haven't decided on a date just yet how far into 24 that would be but I plan on doing that on a more professional level taking the experience that I've had over the years mm -hmm. applying that and anything that I learned in addition to that so we're going to be doing plays we're going to be doing other things outside of that i'm going to also be doing little skits that we'll be recording for my youtube channel to put on there i also plan on getting a scholarship in mom and dad's name uh, mm -hmm. And that's going to be for certain families. I don't want to give all the details right now because I don't want anybody to steal my ideas. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have a lot of things. And for children, I want to help groom children also, uh, teach them proper etiquette, teach young men how to be young men and how to treat young ladies, you know. So I have a lot of ideals, you know, that I'm planning for SRD. So we will have theater, we will have skits, we will have. Um, uh, other things, other things that are coming. Scholarships. Movies. What? Movies. Oh yeah. yeah, I did a couple of I did a couple of short films. They turned out good. As a matter of fact, Elonda allowed us to use what her mom allowed us to record in her home uh, for my mm -hmm. play called Mat my short film called Matters of the Heart, which I was submitting to Black Entertainment TV BET at that time, and uh, I think for our first time it was. It was doing really good. It yeah, was. and that was the I first agree. time. And let me also, if you happen to see it on the web, on our website, because it is there, the actors had about five hours to practice. Because when I found out about it, it was like at the time when it's time to mm -hmm. submit. And so they, I was just pull them together and they were people who had worked with me before in theater, so they were able to do it. They had the talent to do it. And they only had like about five, five hours to try to learn that script and they did it. They did it and, and they, they did, did a it. phenomenal job. It was mm -hmm. good, it was good. So I was very proud of them, very proud of them. Sure, do the people know what SRD stands for? Okay, <laughs> let's tell you about that. SRD is actually my name and my two daughters. I have two adult daughters and five amazing grand loves. Mm -hmm. And so S is for Sherry. R is for Rhonda and D is for Diamond. So we put our names in there. S or D, Hollywood Productions. Thank you for asking that question, yes, Jackie. Yes, you're welcome. Because <laughs> I had actually forgotten that. I was like, what does this stand for? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, but yep, I yep. knew that after you said it. <laughs> yeah, so I put our names in there. So, um, Jackie, I don't know if you were the one who initiated that, but we had uh, some family to come down for my last production in St. Louis that I did in St. Louis from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Did you have something to do with that? I absolutely did. <laughs> yep, it was my dad's first cousin, mm -hmm. Fanny, and her children. Mm -hmm. They came and supported her at one of her plays. All the way from Chicago. Mm -hmm. They came all the way from Chicago. But I had other family too, like even back home when uh, I started doing plays, my family on my dad's side and uh, mm -hmm. just family all together, they came out in a surprising number to support mm -hmm. me. And then as time went on, they actually like Beverly and her mom, they helped with the ticket sales. Right. Because I'm telling you, working that table, <laughs> as she said, can become very overwhelming. Yeah. So it's not a one man job. It's not a one-man job to do that. And I would like to say this. Um, when I started helping Sherry with her plays and inviting people, I'm going to be honest with you. There were a lot of people They were like, she just live in St. Louis and she writing plays. Because, you, know? <laughs> you know, you have a lot of naysayers. You mm -hmm. have a lot of very critical people. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit that some of the most critical people that came to her show actually left and said, Okay, she's bad. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> like, you. Like seriously, I never knew that. Because I, I, I never told you, but yes, I'm like literally, they are like can be some of the most negative people, <laughs> and they literally called me up and they were like, "Okay, she's cold. She's bad. Oh. She can really write." Thank you. And I was like, and I, it literally brought chills like I'm getting now because I was like, 
yep, she's going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> she's Thank going you for it. that. Yeah. And I remember also wanting to get my own op opinion of audience viewers. And so sometimes, which was hard to do, because when you're doing a production, you're trying to pay attention to everything that's happening backstage, which can get really ugly. Backstage, people can fall out and, and just really be bumping heads, but then they get out on stage and they bring it. And then after it's over, everybody's cool. But sometimes behind the scenes can get really ugly. And I, it's hard for me to pull my, myself away because it's my baby. And so it's hard for me to pull myself away. But there were times when I would sit in the audience just to get the reaction of the people. And I would see people crying mm -hmm. and people laughing. Mm -hmm. And that just really moved me to see that. And I would also give away about 20 tickets to like a women's shelter because mm -hmm. I know that they're going through something in their life and they probably don't have money to go and do something like that. So I would always uh, call up a shelter or something and give away about 20 tickets for that. So to see them sitting there and crying and laughing really, really touched my heart. That really touched my heart. So I want to continue doing something like that. I remember our mother was not an attorney by no means, but <laughs> she wanted to make sure her daughter was legally taken care of. So she gave her the best advice that I think that anyone could have given her when she first started writing plays. She told her to make sure she got everything copywritten. And I do. And if you're a writer out there, you need to do that because people will steal your stuff. Mm -hmm. Didn't you have something? I like had that an to experience. Happen? I had an experience, and it had to do with one of my uh, short films that was called Wear Black. And the guy, he was really intrigued by the title, and there was a lady in the show that had mm -hmm. the same last name as him. Now, I don't know if they, had, if they were related, <laughs> but he kept mm -hmm. asking me for a copy of the script. And I didn't want to give it to him because I didn't have a copy written at that moment. Right. And next thing I know, she had given him a copy of the script. Yeah. And then he starts saying, well, I got some ideas, blah, blah, blah. And he sent his ideas back. Now, for that uh, short film, they only wanted about eight minutes, mm -hmm. and which is about eight pages. And uh, when he returned it to me, it was like 30-some pages long. So it didn't look like mine at all, but he used my idea. Mm -hmm. So if he would have sent that in for a copyright, we would have really had a, a lawsuit going. Mm -hmm. And that kind of turned me off from doing business with him because he also wanted to buy the script from me for two years where I would have no say in it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of two years, if he wasn't able to do anything with it, he would give it back. But of course, that was going to come as a cost to me and probably more what he gave me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So please make sure that you are covering mm -hmm. yourself to make sure that your work is protected. Make sure that your work is protected. And if there's anyone out there that would like to sponsor this <laughs> great, great playwright, yes. <laughs> please go to the website at www.hollywoodproductions.com. SRD, SRD, hollywoodproductions.com. Yeah. Yes, we're not too you proud. You won't regret it. We're not <laughs> too not proud. We will, we will receive any gifts that your heart, uh, that you're moved to do. We would appreciate that. We would appreciate that. Because uh, it is a monster. It is uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. Um, there is like putting the stage together, getting furniture, having furniture for that, mm -hmm. getting it to mm -hmm. and from the place and, you know, making sure you have all your props and somebody who's paying attention to props, making sure they're ready for the next scene. Microphones. You know? Yeah, microphone mm -hmm. challenges and all that kind of stuff. Because I, I went out and started buying microphones and had no clue that it needs to be compatible, compatible the <laughs> with the right. stuff that you're using. So I was just buying microphones, you know. But uh, And I, we had Tim. Remember that time? Oh, yeah. Oh, my we God. our cousin. <laughs> Tim, I probably couldn't pay him enough money to do it again because it stressed him out so mm -hmm. much. He was back there going through. <laughs> he was. He was back there going through, so I probably mm -hmm. couldn't pay him enough money to come and do it again. But uh, anyway, we've had some experiences. We've had a situation where the leg on the couch got broken when we were. Uh, we made it all the way to the venue, and we were unloading it. And then the leg on the on the couch got broken, so we had to improvise by putting uh, books underneath there, you know. And then another thing that's not fun is if a prop is not in place, mm -hmm. and you need that Ooh. prop, and you need that prop. Yeah. So just just little inside details, just a little inside details. And so, um, wow, you guys have given me some really good 
feedback, some really mm -hmm. encouraging things that you've said. So I really appreciate that. And so do you have any ideas for us going forward when we like the next time we do auditions, I actually want to record it for the YouTube channel. You have any Ooh. ideas for what we should do next or? That's a great idea, but I do like the fact that you brought up like maybe some type of etiquette for young children. Yeah, I want to do I that. I think that is amazing. I want to do that because Cause believe it or not. Yeah. Go ahead. I no, I was just going to say, you know, some children really need that. They you do. know, some are brought up in homes where parents are absent and they're raising themselves. So if you, you know, had something like that, you know, yeah. maybe they would have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to learn some, you yeah. know, and, etiquette. And, and doing this is not just entertainment for us. Like it's, it's a ministry, it's inspiring, it's encouraging. And um, it can also save an at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. uh, say, for instance, that they're having a rough time, but they have a mm -hmm. gift or a talent that maybe mm -hmm. they haven't discovered yet. Giving them an opportunity like this uh, and then them getting the feedback and the applause. Or you know. belonging. Yeah, yeah. And, and it gives them that, you mm -hmm. know, and then they it, it can really change the trajectory of their lives. So uh, if you have any young people out there and you know they have a gift that we can cultivate, please do contact us. Please do sure. contact us because we want to work with them and we want to give them all that we can. And once we get uh, that scholarship going and then I will explain what that's about at that time. But that's going to be a blessing to a family as well. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a blessing, sure. a blessing. So, Jackie, mm -hmm. let's talk about some embarrassing moments. Oh, wow. She had to bring that up. <laughs> it's all in fun. Tell them about your experience after the show was over <laughs> and you took an ugly spill, <laughs> meaning a fall. Oh, Lord. So this was, I think, the show that was at Harris Stowe University, mm -hmm. which is right now been turned into an HBCU. <laughs> Yay! And actually one of our neighbors is the president of the college, wow. Dr. Latanya Collins. All right now. All right. So we were packing up, getting ready to leave. <laughs> And I've had a history of falling downstairs and things like that. My yes. equilibrium is yes. a little off because my hearing is not the best. So um, thank God a lot of people had left the venue, but it was still some people there. And I don't know what happened. I can't even tell you what happened. All I know is <laughs> I hit the floor. My legs went up in the air. And that would be one of the days that I had on some pantyhose. And ladies, you know how sometimes you buy pantyhose too big. <laughs> I had the toe pulled underneath my foot. <laughs> so when the shoe came off, the pantyhose were hanging. And I'll never forget, what was the young lady's name? It was Leela Gardner. Leela and her husband. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were mm -hmm. fiancé or husband at the time. They were standing right there. And my legs went right up in front of him, of yeah. all people. people. A man. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It was so very embarrassing. And Sherry had to bring that up. But it was so please, Jackie. Please, please just, tell me you were intact up on the I was intact uh, okay. up <laughs> I was. Because you know sometimes with pantyhose we didn't eat. Right, 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 right. Girl, it was so horrible. I said I don't ever want to see that man again in my life. <laughs> He'd probably say I don't see her again. Right. <laughs> I know that was so funny and when I heard it because I she didn't was see it way happen at the front at the, at the stage and I was way at the back and what did you say I know that's Jackie <laughs> she did <laughs> really she did she said she, she yelled it she said I know that's Jackie what happened I was like wow <laughs> always follow she has some other fall stories too but we won't share those unless she wants to but mm -hmm. that one is very funny as well <laughs> But oh, since this one happened at the play. I'm that's glad I haven't had any experiences. Oh, Yolanda, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm always falling. Well, we did have a, let's talk about some bloops in the play. Uh, we had a, a one actor, Jackie Thompson, I believe. Very, very talented young lady. Very talented young lady. As a matter of fact, she's doing her own thing. I think she's directing and stuff like that. But she fell in the play one time. Ooh, wow. But whenever you make mistakes, just roll with it because they don't know if that was planned at all. And actually, it was it was good. It was good for what was happening because she was arguing with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it just looked like it was a part of it. As long as you don't call attention to it, they don't know. Right. They don't know. So that was that was that. So, Jackie, have you had any experiences with cast members or musicians or anything that you saw or noticed that you didn't particularly care for or that you would like to say something nice about? 
No, none that, you know, that didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. I know at one um, point you used the musician at my previous church, mm -hmm. Alonzo, and he was very gifted. Very gifted. Very gifted. He brought gifted. some young ladies in that could really sing, mm -hmm. and that just put another layer of excellence into your it play. Does. It does. Now, Alonzo, I'd like to give a shout out to you for that. That was awesome. You hung awesome. on in there with Sherry until she and left St. Louis. we had Jesse Lewis. Prather, another yeah. phenomenal oh, yeah. person. Yeah. We had Michael Pugh. All of mm -hmm. these guys are located back in St. Louis. Phenomenal musicians. Phenomenal musicians. Well, Michael Pugh is actually here, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. He's he relocated. He relocated here and he's doing his thing. I think he's been working for Janet Jackson even. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very talented. When I say yeah. these people are talented, you know, and unsung heroes in St. Louis, they just need to be discovered and meet the right people, but they deliver every time. They deliver every time. And I also have to say the talent that we uh, discovered during our productions, some of them had experienced it, but not all of them. And everybody came and proved themselves. Mm -hmm. They proved themselves. They did a great job. And that just adds uh, more to my writing. You yeah. know, because I, I can put it on paper and I see one vision, but actually when it comes to life, you start seeing other visions. And so when they bring mm -hmm. it, to, you know, bring it together and uh, they're, uh, what do you call it when, when like a, a, a guy and a girl, they have that, what's the word I'm chemistry? looking for? The chemistry. Mm -hmm. And then the chemistry comes together and then the music adds another dimension. It's just, it's just phenomenal to watch. It's phenomenal to watch. And then it just, and it starts uh, great friendships. Oh, yeah. Great friendships. I've actually had people to get married uh, that met in my shows. And some of them went on to have families together and, and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But And look at you guys. And we're still here. Mm -hmm. Still here. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Who, Who knew? knew that Halle Berry would become my friend? Right. Right. Go Halle, Halle Berry slash Tony, Tony Braxton. <laughs> oh, what's so embarrassing? <laughs> Right, 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 right. So, yeah, but um, and and she has her own world when she models. It's like all eyes on me. I got this. And let's just bring up my sister saying she was a great seamstress. I had a wedding that I was going to attend, and I said, let me call Elonda and see if she can make me a dress. Guys, I wish I had the dress with me. It was the most beautiful dress that I've ever worn to a wedding. She was so nice. She called me up and we went to the fabric store. She helped me pick out the fabric. And I mean, that I would have thought that somebody in New York put that dress mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And you also did one for me. You did it for two weddings. I did two My weddings. My girlfriend Cheryl got married and I needed a dress. And she did and it. I'm telling beautiful. you, it was beautiful. When I got there, Everybody was just like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. They were talking about the collar and the sleeves. And they were like, who did it? Who did it? And Michelle, I said, this lady named Elonda Gatewood. She said, I know her. She said, oh, my God. Didn't you guys grow up together? We did. She said, oh, I'm going to be calling her soon. And then what happened? She left St. Louis and moved to Texas. She left us, guys. Yes. They make it's hard sound to keep so up awesome. Who's that girl? Is awesome. but you know, and I'm glad you brought that up because she actually made clothes for some of my plays. Mm -hmm. Like we had three cheerleaders in the play yeah. and she made their cheerleading outfits. And if you didn't know that, you would have thought that we ordered them or bought them somewhere. But she made all three of those uh, cheerleading outfits. And she made one of my girlfriend's outfits for her for her. Um, Class reunion, Trulia. Class reunion, yes. Mm -hmm. She made her a beautiful yeah. dress. That makes me sound so awesome. She's she multi-talented, guys. <laughs> she is. She is. She is. She is. But I can, also say, I can also say that about these ladies. Like, I, I'm not going to cry. You can cry if you want to. <laughs> I, I just have to say that one of the things that I've always said about these ladies here, I could not have... It's okay. Go on, cry if you want to, girl. Don't make me cry. Now look. <laughs> I'm just messing I'm hard to when cry. I, when I honestly say that this journey, if nothing else, if I didn't get anything else out of walking across the stage for Sherry in that one play, I totally won because I ended up with the most remarkable people in my life. And um, you just really can't ask for two better people and honestly um whatever happens in the future you totally deserve it and i'm just here and i know you guys know i'm here for you for whatever um thank you that's so beautiful yeah, it is. 
That has truly been amazing. Mm. And she's such a loyal person. Mm -hmm. And when she said, like, the business part of it, she would handle SRD like it was hers. Yeah. That's how serious she is. About that's it. hard to find people that's mm -hmm. really, truly loyal to yeah. you like that. Yeah. She's really like family to us. Well, we have already claimed her. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, our and sister. I've claimed them. <laughs> <laughs> and then she represents well. I don't have to worry about uh, any embarrassment. She's not going to go anywhere and be ghetto or any <laughs> so of that. Professional. I, mean, I can be ghetto. <laughs> be ghetto. Proper. Get yeah, you wouldn't know it was ghetto. You'd be like, she's still professional. <laughs> She'd be like, did she just cut me? Did I miss it? <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> just like today, how many? She she drove over here, what is it, two and a half hours, Yeah, three she drove hours? all the way from Dallas to be here and Actually, beat us here. three and a half hour drive, right, to was get it? here? About three. Yeah, three hours. She drove three hours from Dallas to be here. Being a loyal person. And beat us here. <laughs> right. She called. Sherry. She told me to be here too. Sherry, and we didn't I'm get here at two thirty, right? <laughs> <laughs> Almost three. <laughs> I'm here. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, we're in route. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, that's SRD, guys. Um, that's some of the stuff that we have going on. We've had an amazing journey so far. I have to say that I have really, truly been blessed. All of my productions have done well. I think that there was maybe one or two shows that we did where we had a handful of people to show up. And uh, that was hard to swallow. But not every area is interested in theater. And so mm -hmm. this particular one was over in Belleville. And I did it. And I don't know if we didn't advertise well, because actually at the at the community college, it was a college. Swick? Uh, Swick, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to advertise in my absence because I lived in St. Louis. And so they were on campus and they were supposed to be advertising. And when I went up there, nobody had heard anything about the show coming. Mm -hmm. Nobody heard anything about it coming. And uh, I, I didn't want to just you know, disappoint the cast because they had already put the work in, you know, all the rehearsals. They were excited about doing the show. And so we went ahead and we did this show in front of about five people. So a note to playwrights, do your own marketing. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it up to someone else to do it for mm -hmm. you. You have to do that. I have a marketing team. And, it be, and, and, and let me help you with this too, because you, you have to advertise. Mm -hmm. it's just, you just have to because if people don't know about it then they're not going to come they have to know so you need to advertise you need to advertise in enough time so that you can get a good turnout okay so those are some of the things that you need to know those are some of the things that you need to know and uh, there was something else that I wanted to say about that and let's see advertising oh and then sometimes venues if you are not on the level of having a 5,000 you know, uh, seat Audience, venue, yeah. then you shouldn't get a venue that large until you reach that scale because you may be on the level of 200 people. 200 people sitting in a theater with 5,000 seats is going to look like it did when we had five people in the audience. Mm -hmm, right. So that's something else you want to keep in mind. So if you know that your following is of 200 people, then look for venues like that. And then when you fill that venue up, you have a full house. Okay, so um, this has been fun. Do you have fun. anything you want to add, guys? I do one thing. Okay. I'd just like to dedicate this show to our parents. To our parents. Mary Helen and Willie B. Wright. Mm -hmm. They raised us. They were the best parents that two girls could ever ask for. And mm -hmm. I just really hate that they're not here to see it all being brought to fruition. My mother got a chance to see Sherry's first play. First play. But my dad didn't get a chance to see anything, but he planted the seed in her he to bring all of this mm -hmm. to life. And when we tell you that they were amazing parents, they were the real deal because they protected us from seeing things and hearing things. They shielded us. My mom didn't believe in no spending the night and all oh, of that no. kind of stuff. She, no, no, no. She kept a close mm -hmm. eye. Because oh, she yeah. felt like nobody else could pay attention the way she could. And my dad was the breadwinner. My mom mm -hmm. only worked if she wanted to work. She right. didn't have to. She didn't have to. So he took care of us in that aspect. She took care of us in raising us, keeping us clean, keeping the house clean, teaching us our manners, taking us to church. And daddy provided all the money. We had an <laughs> in-home in etiquette school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so here we are. She ran a tight <laughs> ship. 
<laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she did. So, guys, uh, we have uh, we're out of time now, and we hope that you have enjoyed the show thus far. And we would love it if you would go to my YouTube channel, and uh, you can find me on YouTube under Sherry Wright Seeds for You. And Seeds for You is actually for you because I can bring you here, and uh, we can talk about something that happened in your life, something that you're planning to do, something that you want the world to know. Uh, so that's what Seeds for You is all about. SRD Hollywood Productions is about uh, the arts, okay, which you can also be a part of that as well. So please do go by, visit our website, check me out on YouTube, and look at that website. And we hope that if we've never met before that we get that grand opportunity to meet you and also work with you. All right. So thank you for very much for joining us today. Tell your friends about us. Spread the word. Oh, when you go to YouTube, please like, share and comment let us know where you're from we would love to know all that good stuff all right anything else ladies okay well we'll see you real soon guys bye -bye. thank you so much for joining us bye bye hey I got the recipe, never gon' let any up get the best of me Thought it was distance, but haters is next to me Talk to the spirit, you know I've been heavenly Company definitely show your trajectory This ain't a diss cause I say it respectfully 